Good morning, wrestling fans. Today is Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. Lance Brack here on this Tuesday morning for Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Tuesday so far, wherever you are listening. And last night there was a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic talking about last night's WWE Monday Night Raw. And this morning on GMWF, just want to go over a couple things from last night's Raw once again. And one of those things that I do want to talk about real quick this morning is that we did see Jade Cargill once again backstage with the NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch and Raw General Manager Adam Pearce and we I don't know if we saw really a tease but kind of a little one with Jade Cargill and Becky Lynch. She walked in the back, said, nice belt. And Becky Lynch told her to get in line. And could this be the first feud for Jade Cargill in WWE? Or am I looking too much into this little tease? This doesn't, she was on Raw last night, but this doesn't necessarily mean that she is going to be on Raw permanently every week going forward now. Or do you think she will end up going over to SmackDown? Let me know in the comment section what you think. What you think WWE should do with Jade Cargill. Right now, I want you to be the armchair booker. And let me know in the comments how you would book Jade Cargill. Would you have, to, would you have her go after Becky Lynch right away for the Women's Championship? Or, I was thinking, I think maybe at first, when you bring her on, put her in against maybe some local female talent from whatever city you're in, have her squash them, make her look like an unstoppable force in the women's division, and then uh, after she defeat some of the local indie talent let her eventually face somebody better better each week then elevate have her undefeated kind of like how she was in AEW at first and then have her go for possibly let her win the Royal Rumble in January and then have her go for the title the first time at Wrestlemania but I'm getting ahead of myself but let me know once again let me know what you think how you would book Jade Cargill in the WWE in the comments section either right here on Spreaker on YouTube or whichever podcast app or website you listen to on Also last night on Monday Night Raw, in the main event, we saw the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, and Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest, once again become the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions, defeating the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes and main event Jey Uso, with interference from Jimmy Uso. Definitely was not a clean victory last night, 
we saw Damian Priest hit the razor's edge on Cody Rhodes through the announce table, which left Jay Uso all alone in the ring. And then Jimmy was able to get in and cost his brother the match. And I just first want to say, back when Rhodes and Uso won the titles at Slam of Earth, or uh, what in the world am I saying? Back when they won the titles at Fastlane, they. I was surprised then, actually, that they won the titles in the first place. And then they held them for two weeks. And then lost them last night on Raw. And I have to admit, I'm surprised that they didn't hold them longer. I thought if, even though I was surprised they put the titles on them in the first place, I thought that they would probably have at least a one-month reign with the straps or maybe even longer. I definitely wasn't expecting it to be only two weeks before they dropped them back to the Judgment Day. But now what happens is this the end of the tag team between Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso. What happens to Sami Sami Zayn now? Kind of upset with Jay Uso a little bit last night, blaming him for Kevin Owens being traded over to Friday Night SmackDown. And I thought that was a pretty good story to tell actually Sami Zayn when Jay Uso first came to Raw. He was the one friend he had there. And then now that Kevin Owens is gone, we saw that Sami Zayn getting a little upset with Jay Uso. But then he did apologize to him after. And what's this mean now Jimmy Uso of course being a part of Smackdown and then I don't know I thought if they were going to have this brother versus brother match Jimmy versus Jay Uso they at least wait to maybe uh, Wrestlemania but I know they do try to stack the crown jewel premium live events and I guess there's a chance they could do this at Crown Jewel but I kind of think that might be rushing it a little bit maybe going into this match a little too soon but that's just me though let me know what you think what's going to happen after last night And how long do you think the Judgment Day will hold on to the tag team titles? I think it's going to be longer than two weeks, but who knows? Let me know in the comment section, either right here on Spreaker, YouTube, or whichever podcast website you listen to on. And that is all for this Tuesday morning episode of Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Hope everyone enjoyed the podcast, and remember, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave your feedback and opinions on last night's Monday Night Raw in the comment section, once again, either here on Spreaker, YouTube, or whichever podcast website you listen to on. And it's Tuesday, so... I am not sure yet if I will be doing a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic talking about NXT tonight. I usually play it by ear, so I'd say probably 50-50. But I will be back tomorrow morning right here on Good Morning Wrestling Fans to preview tomorrow night's AEW Dynamite back on Wednesday. 
And once again, this Saturday night, we have Impact Wrestling Bound for Glory on pay-per-view and AEW Saturday Collision. I plan Saturday night to have a live episode of the podcast, so stay tuned for that. But like I said, we have NXT tonight. Hope everyone enjoys tonight's episode of NXT. I will talk to everyone tomorrow morning. But until then, have a great pro wrestling day.